he he was able to innately connect with every person that was in front of him that needed a chiropractic adjustment. He would, when Dr. Gonsett saw a new patient, the only thing Dr. Gonsett, Dr. Gonsett never saw the consultation, the exam findings, or the x-rays until after he scoped and palpated the patient. And then he told the patient what was wrong, and then he looked at the <laughs> exam findings and said, well, huh, I guess I was right. So in the late 70s, he'd already been a chiropractor for 50 years. So he had 50 years of experience to get to what I saw. So, but as, as the history books show that it was in the 30s already where he was seeing 100 plus patients a day. And so yeah. in the 60s, 50s and 60s, he was seeing 300 patients a day. Dr. Gan said never went to bed and got, got up in the same day for 30 plus years of his career. And so I, I learned a tremendous amount from that a show and tell type thing. But, uh, where he, he did, you know, completely evaluated me uh, uh, with a scope and motion, static, viz, x-ray, and, and uh, uh, then adjusted me. And so I, I just learned a, a lot about all aspects of the technique uh, as a result of that. It, it, it's because of, of all that he put into me that I, I wanted to put as much into as many other people as I could and help them learn um, as much as I could teach them about the Gunstead work. He's awesome. <laughs> no, uh, the way he behaved, you know, behaved he did this, he, he, the way he practiced, and the way he showed it, how to do things. I mean, he was just amazing. And we um, just taken in, uh, our whole group from the school, we just taken in how proficient he, he did everything. He was a unique man in the sense that every adjustment he gave excited him. And to give you an example on how excited he got, years ago, uh, probably 30 or more, when he was on 60 Minutes on national TV for a week, they had him and some other people on there. And when they were filming this down here at the clinic, the first time he actually saw himself give, a, give an adjustment to a patient and he heard that clunk that he always talked about, his eyes got big as a dish. And that man loved every single adjustment. Another thing that proves that point is you might be seeing him as a patient at 1 o'clock in the morning, which after maybe 200 patients, he had to have been tired, fatigued. And he'd run the scope down, he'd look at the x-ray, palpate it, and he'd sit there and think, there's something not right. Now, most people would just say, I'll give him an adjustment, we'll see how they feel next time. Not guns that he'd send him in for an x-ray, analyze the x-ray, and even make him later getting home. But that's what he loved. Every single adjustment had to be perfect. And one thing he always told us students, he says, use boys just too hard, too often, in too many places. And that's true. And he spoke broken English, but the guy was just amazing with the dedication he had. I mean, he would work up to 20 hours a day, six and a half days a week. Sunday morning, he'd work another half day. And then Sunday afternoon, his wife would drive him around to people that were bedridden that couldn't get to the clinic. And it was just amazing. He loved it that much. Didn't particularly care about money. It's just that he loved chiropractic and doing it perfect. As a patient of his for 12 years, I knew his touch. I knew how fast he ran the nervous code up and down the spine. I knew his feel when he would touch you to adjust you. There wasn't a lot of tightness there. It was just the smoothest, most incredible feeling in the world. And I set my goal when I got in practice, even though I was very weak at the beginning, to mimic Gonset as much as I could. And that's why I feel that he was probably the most important influence I ever had in my life in regards to practice of chiropractic. Clarence was showing other students how to fix my neck, fix my six cervical, adjusted it. However, I never made it out of town and had break neuralgia, pain down my arm. 
you know, things sometimes don't go quite right. So you got to be able to accept it, you know, and fix it. So I came right back here. He said, oh, I must have moved that a little too far. Fixed it the other way, it's gone. You know, but it just goes to show you that you've got to have some seminars, enough seminars to where you have confidence in your ability. And it's always good for you to, me to try and adjust you, for example. You can see how it feels, you know. Um, I may not be able to do it exactly the same as Gunstead. And my fingers aren't as bad as his. Did you ever see his fingers? Oh, at the end, they're crooked like this, you know. And they're long. I mean, Norwegian. Like he's got his hands together and that thing like that. And you can see up here. See those fingers? I mean, he, he just so damn many people. His fingers were goofy. I always said that you got an advantage because they're bent so you can fix things better. You know? <laughs> that is pretty good darn neat. But anyway, I got to fly to northern Minnesota. I, I, I'm on the board of directors of uh, the Lake Association. And I'm the head of the sport fishing program. So I got to report to the thousand people for breakfast tomorrow morning how fishing's been. <laughs> he had a good sense of humor. And I used to, when we were down the clinic, he used to adjust everybody all the time. And I'd stand there and hold a card for him. And I'd watch how he'd scope and stuff, watch how he palpate and stuff, you know. And he'd joke around a lot. And uh, I'd ask him questions here and there. And in fact, the very last time I ever saw him alive, he was in the last uh, office when he first came in that door. Came up, he adjusted me, and I had my picture taken with him. And I had a bad T10, which is a PRIT, and he put me in an EHS, and he reached across and used his inferior hand and sat there. And I said, Dr. G, you never taught that us before. You said we had to be on that site. Oh, I have some trucks up my sleeve. 